The on-again, off-again U.S. summit with North Korea is back on again. The announcement came today after talks at the White House. Nick Schifrin begins our coverage. This handshake has not happened in almost 20 years, a sitting U.S. president and senior North Korean envoy at the White House. And after their 90-minute meeting, it was all backpats, smiles, and photo ops. President Trump walked Kim Jong-chol all the way to his car and then relaunched the summit he canceled only a week ago. You'll be in Singapore on June 12th. Uh, and I think it'll be a process. It's not, I, I never said it goes in one meeting. I think it's going to be a process. That word process is a shift. In the past, the administration insisted Kim Jong-un and the North Koreans immediately give up their nuclear program. The North Koreans demanded step-by-step -step denuclearization with step-by-step -step American incentives. But President Trump used process about 10 times today, indicating he's okay with staged denuclearization. We're not going to go in and sign something on June 12th. We never were. We're going to start a process. And I told him today, take your time. You can go fast, we can go slowly. By embracing a, a process, I think the president has uh, uh, basically decided that he cannot resolve a conflict of 70 years in the making overnight. And he also is embracing a pragmatic approach to trust building on the peace side and dismantling North Korea's nuclear establishment step by step. Uh, so it's a big shift. Frank Januzzi supported the 2004 talks with North Korea and was the State Department and Congressional North Korea policy and, uh, analyst. He's now president of the Mansfield Foundation. Uh, denuclearization of North Korea will take years at best. So the president is staking his future now, this process, on a step-by-step -step process. It's uh, a very good thing uh, because it, it actually gives him the opportunity for success at the end of the road. Until now, the administration has claimed its maximum sanctions pressure brought the discussions to this point. Today, President Trump said he didn't like that term anymore. I don't even want to use the term maximum pressure anymore because I don't want to use that term. Well, the president, by taking that term off the table, um, is signaling goodwill to North Korea, which he hopes will be reciprocated by the sustained uh, missile test and nuclear test freeze by the North. Uh, but he is essentially saying, while we're talking, unless this breaks down, uh, we're not going to enact any new measures against each other. Seventy years ago, the Korean War devastated the peninsula. The U.S., North Korea, and China signed an armistice. Today, President Trump said the summit might finally produce a peace treaty. Can you believe that we're talking about the ending of the Korean War? You're talking about 70 years. That's something that could come out of the meeting. It's historic. Kim Jong-un wants to sit down with President Trump, shake hands, and declare an end to the hostilities that have been on the peninsula for 70 years. If Kim Jong-un can pull that off, uh, then he will do something that his father and his grandfather had failed to do, and he himself will go down in the North Korean history books uh, as a great leader. This was the highest level meeting between a sitting U.S. president and North Korean official since 2000, when Bill Clinton met Marshal Cho Myung-rok in the White House. Today, President Trump said he'd gone farther than any of his predecessors. I think the relationship we have right now with North Korea is uh, as good as it's been in a long time. And as he left for a weekend of summit preparations, President Trump said he had faith that the process he restarted would yield a deal, quote, for the good of millions of people. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm Nick Schifrin.